Daniel Ariola. I got my very first anxiety attack at church. I remember telling my mama that I would be right back. Solo voy al baño. I just need to go use the restroom. And as soon as I got in, I started to breathe heavily. My chest starts to feel tight, and soon my whole body felt compressed. And I started to get scared for no particular reason at all. It's very frightening. I feel as if I'm being shoved into a small room with no windows at all. Like if my oxygen was being cut by any one asshole. I start to get butterflies in my stomach, but not in a good way, more of a sense of dread. My mind was completely shook. I was surprised because all I was trying to figure out was why am I getting something so horrible in a place that's supposed to be holy and happy? My anxiety felt like I was drowning in water with no way of ever reaching the top to get some fresh air. Anxiety, stress, depression, mental health. For those who don't know what mental health is, mental health is a condition with regard to a person's psychological and emotional well-being. This can vary often to many things that a person may be dealing with and going through, and very simple symptoms can be feeling sad, extreme feelings of guilt or excessive fears and or worries, and confused thinking or reduced ability to concentrate. Taboo, prohibited or restricted by social custom, I really don't know why a topic so serious like this one is very ignored today, almost as if it were not important. I really wish I would have had a little bit more insight into that topic before I was hit with this. I was excited for junior year. In my mind, this year would go perfect and I would get the best grades of my life and improve my own persona. At least that's what I thought would happen. I forgot to remember about the fact that anything happens at any moment. You have no control of your life at all. I got home from school one day. My mom was in the kitchen cooking for us. As I walk in, she lets me know that we received mail and that we got a letter for about in our apartment. My mama's not knowing how to speak or read English, asked me to read out loud what the letter has said. Dani, ¿me puedes decir lo que dice la carta, por favor? As I start to read the words on the paper, it became clear to me that this was no friendly letter letting us know how nice our apartment was. Nos están corriendo. They're kicking us out. When my mom has heard those words, she stayed silent, as if nothing had happened at all. And so she continued cooking for us, as if we had never had that conversation. After an hour or so, my dad came home, just like that. And just like I told my mom, I told him, Papa, recibimos una carta diciendo que solo tenemos un mes para movernos. We only have a month to move out. And just like my mom, my dad stays silent, as if nothing. I leave the kitchen, the kitchen almost as soon as I told him, and the kitchen door closes. When that door closes and both of my parents are in, I know that they're going to be in there for a while and have a serious talk. After that while, the door opens and both of my parents step out. They look completely fine, but I knew that they were scared. We could end up homeless in a matter of a month, but they didn't want to say anything. I get mad at the fact that my family keeps away all these issues from me, especially money issues, because I'm not a little kid anymore. I understand that we, have a lot of mo that we don't have a lot of money in our household, and I understand how hard it is to find a house of six when you're on a $2,000 budget, especially when you have pets. But what frustrates me the most is that my parents don't tell me any of this. I want to know when there's a problem in my house because I actually want to help. I know I can contribute. And I did. Every day and every night, during and out of school, I would search and search for homes, but I never found anything. And when I did, it was either too expensive or they didn't accept pets. <laughs> Bitch ass people. Thinking about the fact that maybe soon I won't have a roof over my head and made me doze off in school. I couldn't help but think about the fact, wait, I couldn't help but think about what can possibly happen. I was worried about how my parents were feeling, how my sister and little brother were taking this. <sighs> I would search and search for homes throughout the day and throughout the night, but I wouldn't be able to find anything. All this stress started to build up inside of me, and 
started to build up inside of me, started to make me panic and give me anxiety. I would literally be afraid to be around people at times, and it really sucked, just as I'm somewhat afraid to be up here right now. Anxiety wasn't the only thing that I was dealing with. Aside from this, problems that my family and I were going through, I was also dealing with very personal problems of my own. As child as it may sound, I was going through a really tough breakup that also played a big part of my emotions. I'm sure that you all know what I'm talking about. Good old high school love, right? <laughs> it all started almost a year ago during the end of my sophomore year and going on to be a junior. The relationship I had with my ex had been going on for a long time, but the last stages were just complete shit. Argument after argument, fight after fight, and this was for like three months straight with no exaggeration at all. Just fight after fight every day, that also involved verbal abuse. I would constantly be attacked with hard, harsh words that made my self-esteem drop. <sighs> See, when you're con constantly told something, you eventually start to believe it, whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. In my case, I started to believe that I was a bitch and I was worthless and many other things. I never really said anything back. I let myself get controlled because I didn't want to hurt her. I saw how my father would constantly beat up my mother and call her useless. I still remember all those moments on how he would pull my mother's hair and drag her all over the floor. Sometimes it was my sister. Sometimes it was me. Sometimes all three. I promised myself that I would be a better man than that man. And I told myself that I would never lay a finger on a girl or attack her with aggressive words. That's why I never said any, anything back or ever stood up for myself. I had respect, but deep down, I was also scared to become the same person as my father. Going back to my own relationship, I remember how one day things just got out of hand in an argument with my ex. I was really hurt. Emotionally, I felt really lonely. After that argument, I went to my program, Reality Changers. As dinner time started, Everyone was running up, waiting to be the first in line to get some food. Not me. I was just sitting down with my head on the table while everyone else was eating dinner. And then this person came up to me. She had a huge smile on her face. She comes up to me and asks me if I'm OK. And so, being a person who doesn't like to show their emotions, I just really wipe off my tears and tell her, yeah, I'm OK. She sits down, and we ended up having a really nice conversation. It was really nice talking to that person because for the first time in a long time, I felt some type of comfort and some type of caring feeling for once. And so I started talking to this girl more and more as days go by. And we built up a really close friendship. One day as we're texting, she tells me that she likes me. And my mind was just like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> When I saw that, she told me that my heart was just beating fast because I had a girlfriend at that time, but my girlfriend made me feel like shit, and this other person made me feel so, so great. I didn't know what to re how to respond. <laughs> I mean, I guess I did like her. I just, I was in a huge mess, and I lost clarity of everything. So I continued talking to her. I had a girlfriend who made me feel like shit, and that's somebody who made me feel very special in some type of way. And honestly, the feelings were there, I'm not gonna lie. We continued talking for quite a while. Sometimes we met up, I'm not gonna, sometimes we met up, not, but nothing really ever happened. But there were times where I just really wanted to kiss her, but I always had to control myself because obviously there was somebody else, that, which is my ex. My ex didn't know that I was talking to someone else and eventually she found out. And when she did, it went from chaos to complete destruction. I felt horrible. My mind didn't know what to think. My heart didn't know what to feel. I was having a really difficult time trying to process everything. I ended up losing two people. Do I regret what happened? In a sense, no, because I really learned a lot from that lesson. I never really said anything regarding that situation, but to that one girlfriend slash ex, I'm really sorry for what I did. I ended up hurting you when I promised myself that I would never do that. I know that our last moments were complete shit, but overall, 
you're a really good friend. And to that other person, you know who you are. I'm really sorry to you as well. I ended up hurting you as well, which I feel bad about. You showed up when I most needed a friend and lifted me up, and I'm grateful for that. I hope all is well with you. So getting back to the point, I devoted so much time and gave this person everything that when that person was no longer there, when no one was no longer there, I felt lonely. Adding this problem on top of everything that I was already going through led me to have a lower self-esteem and to see everything in a worse way. I became depressed. So many sleepless nights, heartbroken, stressed, hopeless, and worried, wondering why this is all happening to me, especially when jun junior year matters the most. My grades dropped from straight A's to straight C's. I even got my first D. What made this worse was that I had no one to talk to about this. I couldn't talk to this about my parents because my family doesn't know what mental health is. It was a taboo topic in their households, so they wouldn't understand me. Topping that off, the first thing that my parents would ask me would be, ¿Y los grados? ¿Cómo vas en la escuela? They would care more about my grades than how I was feeling, personally. And sure enough, they would be disappointed if I were to show them my grades. Nobody knows how much this sucked. All I really wanted was for someone to notice how shitty I was feeling. All I wanted was, was for my parents just to approach me, just someone to ask me, how have you been doing? How is everything? Are you okay? This was absolutely the worst experience that so far I have gone through in my life. My GPA dropped, dropped significantly. I lost all my friends. And more importantly, I lost myself. Music, power, hope. During this horrible moment, the only way I was able to cope with this through everything was with music, hip hop specifically. It was my, it was my two favorite artists, Sylvain the Q and Logic, that made it possible for me to handle everything. Music showed up when I just desperately needed to hear the right words from someone. It was songs like Anxiety and songs like Best Me that helped me realize that everything will be okay. Anxiety being, someone, anxiety being a song from Logic, where he gives his story dealing with anxiety, and Best Me being a song from Sylvain the Q, where he gives his story of feeling hopeless and how he just wants to be the best version of himself. Music was that real sunshine in my dark world. Music was and will always be my happy place. There is no better feeling of putting my earbuds and have someone tell you in your ear that everything will be okay. But even so, what is a happy ending? Almost a year has passed since me being introduced to mental health. And honestly, I'm at a worse state than before. And the worst part is that I don't even know why I'm feeling like this. It may, it may seem like I'm all right, since to everyone I look happy and I'm always smiling. But that's just because I feel obligated to do so. In reality, I'm going through a lot internally, things that I really wouldn't wish on anybody. I haven't been truly happy in what feels like forever, and I try, I really do try. I wake up and I know that there's school, but sometimes I'm just like, why even bother waking up? Not so long ago, I had the urge to just leave my home and not come back. And the scariest part was that I couldn't even explain to myself why I was feeling that. It's just like I just had to run away from everything. I do try, but lately I, I've just been giving up on myself. I'm starting to forget what happiness feels like. Thank you. Daniel Ariola.